Well, it's been a very full week since last we spoke to you. I, what's been going on? So, in the workshop, uh, look, big empty space. There's no Volvo 164. So that left to go back down to the West Country yesterday afternoon. Uh, so the 164 is out and hopefully Steve will be rather pleased with what we've sent back to him. Uh, we, we wait and see with bated breath as to what he makes of it. Um, Gareth's car, we're still waiting for the exhaust manifold to come back from Zircatec, having been ceramic coated. That'll go on and then that can go back to North Wales for Gareth. This is George's car. Uh, I think this is going to be a really nice car. Uh, it, it seems to be a good one to start with. So we're just sorting out the brakes now. Um, front suspension's all done. Very interesting that the bushes, well, one of the upper wishbone bushes was clearly cracked, but the bushes actually are all fairly recent. However, when I disconnected the ball joints, because we wanted to replace them, the upper and lower ball joint on the front suspension, both the upper wishbone and particularly the lower wishbones had a huge amount of resistance to moving. And indeed, you could move the lower wishbone on the right-hand side a good uh, 50 millimeters, and it would just bounce straight back. Now, it shouldn't do that. Obviously, ideally, suspension um, wishbones should have no friction at all. You should just be able to move them and they move with your fingertip. That's the ideal. Uh, metalastic bushes are a compromise and polyurethane bushes are just a slightly more efficient compromise. So we went and rebushed with polyurethane and now when you move it the wishbone stays there instead of trying to spring back to where it was. So that's a big improvement, um, and we've fitted our, our what we call road rally or fast road springs on here. Those are a nice compromise between comfort and um, sporting, and of course because they're 20 mil lowered, means the whole car's center of gravity is just a little bit lower. Difficult to tell by eye. There aren't many people who could detect that this is a lowered car but uh, that 20 mil makes a big difference in the way the car handles. So that was that. Um, yeah, we've been going through the brakes, uh, the rear drums were getting thin. Uh, the spec limit on rear drums is a maximum diameter, internal diameter of 230 mil. This was about 229. Uh, and as you approach that 230 mil, so the brake drums get hot very quickly and therefore your braking efficiency falls through the floor. Um, so you don't really want to get as close as the spec says, but if you have hit the spec, it's a no-brainer. You change out the drums for new fresh ones with lots of metal on them. The other giveaway is if you've put new shoes in and still your adjusters have gone very deep into the back plate, then you also know that your brake drum is getting thin. Okay, so that, that's progressing nicely. Uh, and this weekend, I'm going to be out all night with Simon uh, on the Preston Rally. We'll be manning controls out in Thetford on the Sandy Lanes there for the mighty Preston Rally. And Owen Turner and Andy Ballantyne will be back out on that. Would you believe they've had, what, probably two or three nights rest? Uh, from the Land's End to John O'Groats rally, and now they're going out on the all-night Preston rally, which is one of the biggest car-breaking rallies in the country. A uh, very tough night event. And what of the Land's End to John O'Groats then? Well, to be honest, we've been buzzing here at Amazon Cars, um, and the Volvo fraternity should be just so exhilarated by that performance. Um, I'm going to concentrate on Amy and the Volvos. Uh, the Volvos won the Mark Team Award on the RAC Rally a month ago. They've won it again on the Land's Edge of John O'Groats. The highest placed team was Volvo. Uh, there were a host, there must have been at least 10 Porsches out on that event, um, some escorts and some very tough competitors. And Amy and Neil just had an incredible run. To put it into perspective, Toff, on Saturday morning, 
at around eight o'clock in the morning. They effectively carried on driving through till about five o'clock on Sunday morning. So close on 20 hours of comp competition. They had a couple of hours break and then uh, then they got a full night in bed on Sunday night. Uh, Monday dawns and they're out competitive again all the way through the night until the finish up in John O'Groats on Tuesday lunchtime. Uh, that last 24 hours was black ice everywhere. They had to cancel Loch Ness uh, 65 mile competitive section because of black ice and that the marshals couldn't get up the hill to get to their control and the competitors couldn't either, or most of the competitors couldn't get up that hill either. So that was cancelled, but then they had the rest of the competitors through that black ice and I had no, thankfully, thankfully I had no idea that conditions were so tough. Uh, we've heard various stories. Um, Owen was, was, was full of praise for uh, the 142's performance and how Neil and Amy coped with the conditions, uh, which was great to hear praise from such a good driver and navigator team. Um, Amy did have a moment at probably around the time we were having breakfast on Tuesday morning. One of the bits of black ice caught her unawares um, and she hit a rock very, very heavily, thought she was going to roll the car, span it round. Uh, but after a quick check with me, we decided the car was good to go and she carried on competitive. That dropped her from the least penalties of the rally, i.e. what you might consider, if it wasn't the Le Jog, as the winning position that she had held for two days, dropped her down to third overall. But this rally doesn't have an overall placing, it has medals. And three competitors got gold medals. Um, uh, and Amy was one of those, which makes her the youngest ever navigator to get a gold medal a couple of years ago, the youngest ever driver to get a gold medal this year. Um, only one other person, is that John Kiff, has ever got a gold medal in both seats, navigator's and driver's seat. She is the second person to get that. Um, so. Oh, terrific, and, and, and to be honest, what a fantastic event. Uh, we have saw for a few years um, the Lance Edge of John O'Groats softened a little bit from its epic nature back in the early 2000s, and this clearly is a massive return back to being a, a very tough rally indeed. Um, and the conditions they saw up in Scotland um, were, were were extremely taxing. So fantastic. And, and for us, great to have been a, a little bit a part of it as we sat out on that hillside on Sunday morning from shortly after midnight to about four o'clock in the morning, marshalling our control um, was just a delight. Um, uh, the competitors were still cheerful even after 19 hours of competing. Um, and uh, we, we were privileged to have been part of it. Um, and just hats off to all of those competitors. They, they had a tough event. Uh, those that muscled on and attempted to get every control had an incredible uh, achievement for them. And if you can find anything on the internet, read up about it. it. It was a very exciting event. And I would have thought anyone who has an interest in motoring will get something out of it, whether you're interested in competition or not. So that's it. Next week, OK, yes, yeah, so the weekend, uh, I'm out marshalling again all night. Uh, next week, well, we'll finish off George's car. What else is on him? Oh, the Krut P1800 under the cover there. That we have found the U-bolts um, for its prop shaft. So the prop shaft will be going back into the Krut P1800. Um, and then I guess we should be seeing Amy's car 142 back from uh, Yorkshire and we'll just go a, I'll probably go through it completely changing every steering joint and ball joint in the front end suspension before we try and set up the suspension again. So, uh, so that'll be a, a nice Christmas job to do 
um, during the festive period. Excellent. Talk to you next week. Bye now.